Hi, so this is a quick demo of Civils AI in terms of tendering and bidding on construction projects. So after you log into Civils AI, uh, app.civilsai, um, you'll have here on the left these two tabs, like projects and libraries. So projects are like construction projects you're working on or bids, for example, and then libraries are groups of documents which you can use across different construction projects. So they could be building codes, some type of um, some type of like regulatory document or standards. So in this sense, if I've uploaded a group together some documents in a library, we have this search feature where you can say height of fire alarm call points, for example. And then, you know, you can, depending on which documents you upload, you can search across all different um, requirements that you might have. And then our system like searches through these documents and tells you the answer based on the context of the document and the content of it. And then it highlights the section that's been used. So we have this search feature and you can upload and create your own libraries with your own documents in here. But what I'm going to show you is the on the project level, how you can use Civils AI for like bidding and tendering. So if I click here, example pipeline project, this will take me to a water project where I've already uploaded a bunch of the tender specifications and contracts and uh, documents like drawings and reports relating to that tender. And I'm going to show you how we've built on top of this, like automated workflows on top of this search feature I was just showing you. So again, you have this search tool where you can type in, for example, project scope, like summarize project scope. And again, this is going to like search through all these documents that I've already uploaded and it's going to generate me an answer. So it's explaining about this water project, telling me about it involves pipe jacking, the different sizes of the pipes that are involved on this project. Um, and then it also takes me to, out of all these tender documents, the section which is on scope of works, so I can read this for myself. It's important to remember that uh, basically this isn't like conversational. So if I search again for something, I can't say, um, I can't link what I've already written like to my previous message. So it's not like a conversational chatbot. Each one of the searches you type in here is um, unique and not linked to anything else. So you can't have a conversation with this. Um, yeah, and the next thing is I'm going to show you how you can actually run workflows on this. So after you've uploaded documents into these different categories like specs, contracts, um, you basically upload them with this tool here. You can drag and drop your documents in here and it'll take about five minutes or 10 minutes to process each one of the documents, depending on the size. Some could be like a few seconds if it's not many pages, but larger documents could take about five minutes to process. Um, I can then uh, I can then show you these workflows. So if I click this workflows tab on the left, um, you'll have at the top here different categories. So you have like bidding, site investigations. So for bidding, for example, we have some templates already made here so you can generate project risk assessments. You can generate legal contract risk assessments as well. And then you have some tools for site investigations as well, which can extract data from different types of reports, like geotechnical reports, lab testing reports. Um, and then I'm, what I'm going to show you here is for contract risk assessments. So the concept here is you have a template for uh, reviewing a contract on, on, the, on your project. And all of this can be customized as well. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select which documents I want to use as an input. So this is going to be like the knowledge base that uh, all of the workflow is going to run off of. So in this case, I want to select contracts at the top here and I want to select my two contracts that I want to use. And then I click confirm down here. So you'll see these loaded in on the left. Um, and then basically what's happening here is I'm running a bunch of different searches. So this is like searching for anything relating to change events. This one's searching for anything relating to delays, liquidated damages, cost adjustments, payment terms. I can also add my own special searches down here. So if I want to customize this, I can actually type in here my own search terms. So I could search for something else in here if I need to. Um, yeah, and then I can link this back into these other two tasks that I want doing on this information I've searched from. So you'll see here now I've connected it in. Um, I'm not going to actually add anything there right now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you 
here these two tasks which I'm doing. So for each one of the chain mentions of change events, I'm basically asking the system to draft a summary of this in plain English for project manager. So legal documents are normally like quite hard for you know, construction project managers to understand. So this is going to help to summarize it in plain English, what it really means. And then I'm also doing a prompt saying, does this, do these provisions follow the best practice score out of 10? Like how standard is this contract? Is there anything in there which is unusual? And then uh, create an output. So I can actually name this um, contract review, for example. And then it's also going to generate some files that I can download if I want to, like an Excel or a Word file. Um, and then once this is all set up, I can actually click this run button up here. Um, and then this will start to process. So I'm not going to do that in this demo, um, but you can just click this. I'm just going to skip to the part where I've already generated. So what I'm going to do here is I, once this is processed, so it took about 14 seconds to process this one, I'm going to click this view outputs button. So once I click this and taken through, you'll see it skips from editor to outputs. And I can see here on the left all these headings which I put in, so like change events, delays, liquidated damages, and these different tasks that I, I asked it to run um, on, this, on these headings. And I'll see here um, like the output, so here is a score 9 out of 10 in terms of change events, how they're being managed in the contract, and then it also gives you some rationale, so it explains how it's reached this decision, like what is it that was like standard about this contract, and it also says here areas for improvement, so where it's like fallen short, why isn't 10 out of 10. And then you see here um, basically the, the, the references that have been used in order to create this summary so you can click here to jump to the sections which are relating to change events in the contract and you can explore basically how those are like how those are being managed from the source itself then below this you have the draft a simple summary of the of the terms relating to that so it's easy for you to understand and then you can just go through each one of these on the left and basically uh, see how it how it's scoring um, and yeah, anything else that you may have chosen to like output from this. But the thing here is that actually um, in the editor view, you can, the order in which the preview is generated is whether or not this is on top of this one. So if I put this below rather than on top, it's going to generate this first rather than this one. This is like the order. This is how you order what you want in the, re in the report, the um, way in which you order these. And so I can skip back to my results here and I can actually download these from here as Excel or a Word document. Uh, table data, it works very well in Excel, but it, this is kind of text output, so probably better if you wanted to put it into Word. Uh, finally, I can also show you, you can create your own custom workflows. So this is like a starter template here. So um, from this point, I can actually create my own, my own workflows in here and tie all these together and connect it back in. So it's it's up to you what you want to search in here. You could type in like project scope, for example. I could put down uh, R any, I'll oh, summarize, summarize any earthworks required. I can also then put in here under project scope something like summarize any landscape, summarize any landscaping requirements. Um, and then tie these all back in. So this is the way it kind of works. Or I could even say, you know, are there any, are, are there any earthworks required? I could ask it in different ways and then basically hit run as long as I've got my, in this case, probably specifications. I'd want the tender specifications to be selected for this one. Uh, and then I can basically save this as well. So if you want to save your own copy, you can click this new copy button up here and I can then save this as my own workflow, um, which I can reuse again and again. So that's about it. And if you are on the trial and you wanted to share, or you're using this and you want to share it with other people in your team, you can basically click this share button up here, and then I can control who I'm sharing this with. A person can upload documents into this project, and then other people in your team, um, only those who are in your admin has put into your own team, um, can't you can share it with them so that's a very 
quick summary of um, all the features on Sybil's AI and how you can get started running workflows on tender, tenders and bits.